All right, it's Sunday, January 24th, 2016. Uh, I have apparently survived the blizzard of 2016. Uh, going outside in a minute, uh, unprepared, because I don't have boots, to see how bad uh, Percy is doing out there. I imagine Percy is buried and probably invisible because she's white and the snow is white. So taking my shovel and my little uh, scraper brush to see if I can't clean off Percy to be ready for tomorrow. All right, I'm outside. This is the turnaround for my building. People shoveling. Here's the front of the building. Here's all a lot of snow. Anyway, somewhere over here is Percy. I'm walking on the parking lot, which has been at least plowed a little bit. There's people out driving around, probably going to go get a loaf of bread or some lottery tickets or something. Um, I'm probably going to have to walk up the street because I can't get to where Percy is because of this big snow bank. So this is a winter wonderland. This is the parking lot. Another view of the front of the building. This is the island uh, where the, the, the roundabout goes around here. Here I'm going to walk out into the main street, Manchester Street, where I live. See all the people over there shoveling. This is the street. As you can see, they have cleared one lane and one lane only. This is looking the other direction. Actually, very pretty. Uh, somebody's got a lot of work done on that one lane clear and this goes down towards Arlington Boulevard which is the way I would drive to work in the morning. But uh, you can see where the cars are parked, that big white truck there. That's usually the side that I park on. That's the side of the road right there. So you can see uh, I probably won't be going anywhere tomorrow. Let's check on Percy. I have no other option than to walk right up the middle of the road here but there's nobody coming as far as I can tell. And I'm wearing running shoes because Probably the best traction and the most likely to dry out when the time comes. And as you can see, Percy's on the left here, uh, valiantly perched for success. Here comes somebody in a Jeep. Oh, they're going the opposite direction. Anyways, here's Percy. I will not be digging Percy out today. You see the snow, probably 10 to 12 feet just to get to Percy. And uh, this chucklehead behind me is right on top of me. Uh, so I'm not going anywhere today, in the car that is, and I'm probably not going anywhere tomorrow because there's just no place for the snow to go. Even if they were to plow it, where is it going to go? So I'll do a little bit more footage out here on the extreme examples of this. You can tell the way the snow is on the cars that it was incredibly windy and blew it up on top of them. It's actually really pretty out here. Fairly cold. Not wearing a glove on this one hand that I'm holding the camera with so that I can control it. And my hand is doing just fine. And look at the back of Percy. Jammed up with the non-aerodynamic frozen water. More uh, evidence that we did have a blizzard apparently. This is the building that I live in. Inside. Snow drift here, partially probably plowed, clearing off this entryway. Very pretty out here, uh, but it will soon be a real big mess. As you can see, people are starting to come out. They can't stand it anymore. Uh, there's no way I'm getting out in a car today, as I've already said. Had the uh, 1975 blockbuster movie Jaws uh, been filmed at Amity Beach in the winter time instead of the summertime. Roy Schneider as Chief Brody might have exclaimed, I'm going to need a bigger shovel instead of a bigger boat. There is a lot of snow out here. I'm going to walk down to Arlington Boulevard, uh, arguably a major thoroughfare, and see how it's doing. But this is our parking lot. And as you can see, the people come through, they do a really good job of plowing uh, the streets or the parking lots. And this parking lot was plowed by a contracting company for the Wood Lake Towers and really what they do is they plow it and they make this mess to where nobody can get out. So while well, you can drive through here and I guess the purpose is for emergency vehicles to be able to get in here, 
Uh, no one's really going anywhere unless they're really hardy. Uh, you can see people put their windshield wipers up here. It's kind of a curious thing, but they do it up here so that the windshield wipers don't freeze to the window. It doesn't really help in this case because it's so deep. Someone is eager to get out of here. Uh, oh, here's somebody that looks like they've already uh, gotten out. They look like they dug about half away and then uh, just drove out, which is what I would do. Here's, a, here's another, uh, looks like an abandoned attempt to get out. Uh, and there's some people that don't care. Somewhere around here, and I think it is one of these cars is a uh, Mustang. I think it's this red one right here. Really pretty car. The guy takes really good care of it. Not a whole lot you can do about it right now. I'm not sure what this is. I'm assuming it's a Prius or something. Anyways, I'm going to walk on down and quit blabbing for a minute. Really pretty though. The trees. Like I said, I'm still in my parking lot. I'm getting ready to get on to South Manchester. Probably have to walk down the middle of the street again. Alright, hopefully I'll be able to stitch this into a coherent movie later. I've never done that before, but I've got nothing but time right now. So. Further down the road, you can see Manchester, or excuse me, Arlington Boulevard is up there where that car is going by and where the red light is up there. Hoping to get down there by that. Um, and what, a, what an interesting uh, lizard this was. There's been a lot of news reporting of a red Jeep in Washington, D.C. that was stuck. You wouldn't believe the amount of coverage it got. It was constantly on TV. The guy. I uh, was trying to rescue somebody else, and apparently it was a manual transmission, and he somehow managed to burn the clutch up, the chucklehead. Anyways, there's a red Jeep down there, but I don't think it's the same one. Again, coefficient of friction rules apply to whether you have one-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. If you have zero traction, you have zero traction. Uh, then you just need to apply logic and uh, so a little wet wear to the situation, which most people don't have. All right, this is Arlington Boulevard. There's a snow plow, a truck, a salt truck. A truck. This guy's getting ready to go. Straight across the street over there is where I go to get to the park to go running and biking. And I don't think I'll be doing that today either. Let's see what happens here. Okay, get to the green light, and there we go. And the tire spinning, off he goes. Probably to go to Walmart, buy some milk bread, duct tape, plywood, plastic, something. See if I can get out here a little closer without getting killed by some uh, driver who's probably texting. Okay, this is Arlington Boulevard. As you can see, there's hardly anybody on it. The streets are passable, as long as you are careful. This is the way to DC, and the way I go to go to work. side streets here. Usually this is how I actually walk to work when I walk. I go up onto the right of that truck there is a sidewalk, believe it or not. Can't see it. We got these dudes here. These taxis look like they're running. Not sure what this guy's doing, but the taxis are out. Good old red roof taxi. Well, I don't use it anymore because I use Uber. It's 10 times better, less expensive, and the drivers actually know where they're going and they don't have to explain to them. See all the snow on top of that vehicle? In Germany, it's illegal to leave that on your car because it flies off. It's basically a big snowy, watery mattress that's going to fly off and land on somebody else's windshield, temporarily blinding them and probably causing them to crash. But in the U.S., there's no requirement to apply any kind of logic to cleaning that off the car so we have these dangerous situations. I suppose if I was a good Samaritan, I'd go get my snow shovel and help these guys dig out like this guy behind me that's in the van. He's probably got to go to work tomorrow and earn a living. He doesn't work for the federal government like I do. So we get the liberal holidays and uh, time off for inclement weather and so forth. But it's really pretty out here. Don't think I'll get my 10,000 steps in today. Uh, I might get 
5,000 and then another 5,000 slipping and sliding. Uh, it's nice out here. Through this gate is a side street that I occasionally take to work also. As you can see, that is an unplowed street there. And you can see the guy digging out. I have no idea what his plan is because he's going to have to be digging for like a week or more. But anyways, uh, a lot of work. I already commented on this spot once, uh, but in further, upon further inspection, I see uh, remnants of cardboard. Uh, I'm apparently, this guy's a graduate level snow, light turtle snow dog. Uh, these were used for traction aids or something, or to keep the tires from sticking to the ground, I'm not sure. But either way, he looks like he knows what he's doing and he's out of here. This is a little comical here. Roadside assistance. Um, he's in his own little snow pool here. Um, don't think he's going anywhere in the old front wheel drive sleigh anytime soon, so don't be calling him. Okay, just back in from probably two hours worth of shoveling snow. I uh, decided to help out random people. My first choice was this huge Russian guy uh, with yellow teeth. Uh, but he looked like he had a handle on it, so I let him go. I wandered down the way, found this lady that had, older lady, had a shovel. It looks like something you'd use to plant a shrub with. She was going to be there a while, so I asked her if she needed help. She was, um, she spoke English, but she was, I think, Hispanic. But anyways, so it was a CRV. It was buried in snow, and I helped her dig that out. Uh, she would have been out there for like the next week. Uh, anyways, it was giving me something to do. It's actually pretty nice outside when you're moving around. I just had this sweatshirt on, a pair of gloves. Of course, my feet are soaking wet because I'm wearing running shoes, and uh, those are not the best thing for stomping around in the snow. Um, I was going to help some other people, but there's some real chuckleheads out there, and they're making a bigger mess by trying to dig out. They're throwing the snow back out into the lane and making that impassable. And honestly, some of the jobs that they have ahead of them are just too much. I don't even want to get involved with that. So I'll try to cherry pick the job and get one that I think I can help accomplish. Anyways, that's that. I think I'm going to eat some lunch now. It's 12 o'clock. This is the car that I helped dig out a couple hours ago. Uh, it looks a lot better than when we started. It looks more like something like that. So quite a bit of work. Uh, pretty good workout. I got about 5,000 steps in.